what's up guys welcome back to another video last week i believe i was just getting these spaces it ended me just getting these spaces set up the spaces set up or they work now so you can create new spaces i changed up the nav a little bit so now instead i think the create space it was like right here but now it's just like down there i think that's a little cleaner so there's a few things that i want to tighten up about this but other than that it's it's pretty much good i'd spent a whole chunk of time last night setting these up so i have these cycles all these cycles are one week long and i had put like two to three like kind of items in each one and like they're called cycles but if you're familiar with like software it's just sprints but linear calls them cycles but pretty much i have this going like my goal was february 1st this goes all the way up to 13 but i only have up to 10 uh really filled out pretty much the goal was february 1st but i think that's a little optimistic just given now given everything i want to complete by then but with that said each little cycle thing is pretty small i might be able to do it much faster than i thought but it kind of defeats the purpose because i split them up kind of strategically so that this is like what you have to do for the week so like just as for example next week just the core post creation adding a template uh, start from scratch so that was an idea i had for when you go to create a new project instead of starting from scratch with like no spaces nothing and you have to manually add all the spaces i thought it'd be cool to have a template where if you're like a SaaS product or something you just click on that that creates the template for SaaS products and it'll just have like the main the main things like feature requests will already be there set up to the roadmap bugs same thing like general maybe some other things that i'll still have to brainstorm but just so you can click one button and you're set up it just you know eases user onboarding but i don't think that's going to be too difficult to do and the core post creation that's probably going to be a big chunk of time so i mean some of them you know make sense for a week but others there's some other cycles in here that honestly could probably like i'll probably be done but then it also defeats the purpose of having these cycles because the goal or the reason behind having them was that i could have a set goal that makes sense for the week and then if i finish them early i can like finally turn my brain off right so i don't want to get into the habit of oh i finished early let me see what the next cycle is and start pulling tasks down from there because then i'm just going to be endlessly working again which isn't a bad thing but i just don't want to get into the habit of it to where i can't even shut off because that's a problem that, a huge problem that i have where I can't relax. And this way, you know, when you when you have all the work spread out or split up into weeks, you have a goal every week, you know exactly what you have to do. It's all planned out to get to your end goal, your end result of the product. And if you stick to this, finish out everything week to week, you'll get there by that date. And if you finish everything on like a Wednesday, Thursday, you have the rest of the week to just relax. So I think it's a good system to adopt if you don't have something like that in place already. I think most project management apps um, have sprints built in, but honestly, you could just use a whiteboard, pen and paper, like there's nothing, doesn't have to be an app. But linear is free uh, for up to like 250 issues, but you can just keep deleting the done ones. So it's pretty much a free, free app to use. But yeah, other than that, the goal for this week or what's on the, the kind of the, the main goal for this week is uh, I just want to set up Google Auth. It's kind of, it's kind of boring things. Google authentication, Set up, forgot my password, and then the role of security, uh, which I might wait until the next week because there's going to be still some things for that. But I might just get it over with because it's gonna, it's not gonna change at all. So that's pretty much. I already set up, yeah, just some space creation and then set that up. But then now for the rest of the week, just focusing on these three things, which yeah, it's not super exciting, but just stuff that has to get done. I was debating moving this from my password to like just later on because it's not like a huge must but I thought, you know what, may as well get it over with. And Google Auth, I haven't really set up Google Auth before, so I, I just like, it's so much easier when you sign up to an app and you can just click on that Google button. It just makes the flow so much easier. So I want to prioritize that a little bit and it would be nice to get it done. Like the earlier, the better. So the thing with I Forgot My Password, which I'm really not looking forward to, is with Superbase, when it sends you your confirmation email, it's like sends a token, or I guess by default, sends a token through the button and then the if you're not using Gmail, if you're using like Outlook or some other email uh, providers, it'll pre-click the links and expire the token. So if you go to like confirm the, the, the reset, password reset, it won't register the auth token because it'll already be expired. So then I had to switch that to use like one-time passwords for Notably, which was kind of a headache. And honestly, I'm kind of just thinking about or remembering that now which kind of sucks because I'm probably going to have to 
rework even the sign up flow a little bit to use one time passwords. But I think Google Auth, you don't have to worry about that, which is nice. But it'll still be good to have the email password as well. And if that's the case, I'll definitely have to rework everything for the one time passwords, which wasn't a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. But other than that, I think it's coming along well. I think I could definitely be working a little bit faster, but that's why I think with this weekly cycle thing, things are gonna start picking up quite a bit. And I've been watching a lot of Matt Armstrong on YouTube. He pretty much, he rebuilds cars, um, like completely totaled cars, and he'll just rebuild them from, from scratch pretty much. And, uh, but it got me thinking, and this is just like my brain kind of, you know, thinking about YouTube. Um, but I think it would be a great idea and a great concept. And it's something I want to do eventually. Uh, once I get more experience, but like his concept, you know, you see a crashed car, it's like a supercar and he rebuilds it. So anyone who, you know, likes that car is a fan of that car, or even just as a mechanic, likes cars being rebuilt, they'll want to watch that video. And the way he films it, it's like a, it's like a show. It's like really, enter really entertaining. You don't even, I don't know anything about cars, but it's still super entertaining, but I think it would be really cool as well on the software side of things. Once you kind of get, you know, enough experience with growing SaaS products it'd be cool to almost purchase like a failing SaaS product or like, like, cause there's these sites you can go on. I can't remember the, the name of them now, but where you can buy just software products and it will say your revenue or the revenue they're doing or whatever. But, um, it would be nice to almost buy like purposely failing, uh, products that would be really hard to turn around. And then you make a series out of turning that software around and making it profitable and successful. I think obviously that'd be really hard and it's honestly not, probably can't compare it to rebuilding cars, but I think the similar concept would be cool. And uh, yeah, I think I might, I might, that's gonna be the goal for this channel eventually. Once I get more experience in a few years, uh, I think that's something I'll dive into, which I think would be just an amazing, amazing video, video to not only create, but also watch if I was just watching them, so. So it's Wednesday today. I have a busy weekend this weekend, then this whole week, like Christmas stuff's going on, then New Year's, so it's like, it's gonna be a, a crammed or a really busy next two weeks. But I think it'll be, it'll be fun, you know, less time, more, more time to, to get some stuff or less time to get stuff done, but less time to procrastinate because of that. But I don't know if next week, if I'll have a video, I might pre-record a video, but I don't want to just make a video for the sake of making a video. So we'll have to see what happens there. But yeah, these next two weeks, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with the videos, but yeah, we'll see. But in the month of January, I'm planning on like really pushing myself in this month and to see how much I can really get done because I saw a tweet and I know I'm really against hustle culture, working super hard that, you know, no balance. Like on one hand, you know, it, it the idea of it sounds nice, but it's just super unsustainable. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I have really pushed myself to the limit before. So I almost want to try, give myself 30 days to like really, really work as hard as I possibly can just to see what happens. I think Alex Ramosi had a tweet about, and I know a lot of these people on YouTube are just setting up funnels for you to buy their products or whatever they're endorsing. But I do want to give myself like 30 days of like genuine, no procrastinating, like on, like locked in for 30 days to see what that limit is. Because I think when you don't know that limit, when the time comes where you need to kind of go all in it, go all in to make something work, it's going to be harder to convince yourself you can do it. But if you previously have pushed yourself the limit, you know what your limit is so that if it comes to it down the line, you, you have confidence in yourself that, okay, this isn't a lot of time, but I'm confident in my work ability or my work ethic to, you know, get some stuff done in that short, short window of time. So just an experiment. I don't know, honestly, if I'm going to do it yet or not, but we'll see how it goes. All right. Google auth is set up properly. Didn't take me too long. Suabase honestly makes it really easy to set it up. So all, all it literally is, is just, I have one button here. So I have like the server page component login, and then I have a, in the form, I just have one button. That's just calling this function. And then it redirects to the auth or the callback and then in the callback. It's just literally like one, one thing that exchanges the code that gets in along the, with the URL and then redirects depending on if they came from a project page or if they just did the sign up. Yeah, so now you can click continue with Google throw in an email, super easy, and then you get logged in. So now next, I want to really just wrap up the set, forgot my password stuff. So I'm going to try to do that now. I don't know yet. I guess I may as well do the, the one-time passwords and try to get that set up. 
I wish there was a better way to handle that. Because if Superbase makes it so the way you're supposed to do it, like by default is through like the button with the links and then passes the token through the links, there has to be a way like around that for other email clients. So I'm going to look into it very briefly for a bit, but I want like those are the last two kind of main tickets besides the role of security that I want to just wrap up today. So I'm going to take a brief look into that and see if not, I'll have to do the one-time passwords again, but I think there's, there's got to be a cleaner approach than that. I think the one-time password's kind of, kind of annoying to do. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. So I think I've boiled down, excuse the fingerprints. Damn, that's worse than I thought. Um, <laughs> but for the role of a security, I think I've boiled it down to, cause since it's, since basically you have, you know, projects are going to be viewable from even on like anonymous public users and same with pretty much most of the tables, you're going to be able to view them without much security, like as in reading the data, because if you have a project, you want people to be able to view it without signing up uh, or logging in. So I've kind of boiled it down to at least for just the projects and spaces table selects anyone public updates the owners or admins of the project insert uh would be authenticated so if you're you can only create a project if you're an authenticated user and delete i think owners only makes sense uh, to delete the project and then spaces similar with the select anyone public insert owners or admins of the project can create a new space and then same with the update and deletes uh, then it got me thinking too, I think later on, I'm not going to worry about it for now, but I think later on, I'm going to break it down to where when you have, when you're the owner, you can invite an admin with selected permissions and you can choose what they can do individually. That way, if you have, I mean, I'm kind of building this around smaller teams or solo developers anyways, but if it does get to a point where that would be required, if you have like a larger team and you want to have admins without having every single permission, uh, then you could pick and choose. Essentially, admins would be pretty much everything the owner can do except like destructive te things like deleting projects, deleting spaces. I mean, that one's iffy, but I think having like a, I think an admin being able to do that would be handy just for the, the use case that I'm using it in. But I think since looking at this, this honestly doesn't seem so bad. So I'm going to just go ahead and try to build it, like just put this into place for the role of security. It probably won't take me too long. Then after this, I'm going to go to the forgot my password. And honestly, I think I can bang out everything that's on the list today. Like it's just, that's the last two left. So I might, like it's only Thursday today and the, the week cycles go to Sunday. So I might move one, maybe two tasks uh, from the next cycle over. But then, then again, I don't want to get into a habit of doing that because like the whole purpose of this is it's set up so I can enjoy time off, but at the same time, I want to be working as hard as I possibly can. I don't want to like give myself luxury breaks, you know, and I don't really necessarily need them. I think like one or two days off or even the weekend off, if I've done the work for the week is nice, but like Friday, it's a weekday. I may as well add something I can, I can do tomorrow. So anyways, let's get these roll of security set up. All right. Just editing the video up now. I uh, finished the roll of security, got that all set up. And I looked into the one-time password thing a little bit more, and it looks like I'm gonna just have to use that as the main thing. So I've kind of decided on, instead of even using the password for the sign up, could be, because if I'm gonna use the one-time password, right, where you're gonna need to enter, if you sign up, enter your password, email, password, sign up, it's gonna send you a one-time password token, which then you can confirm your email with. Like if I'm already using a verify, page with the one one time token on the reset password page i may as well use that on the for the sign up as well so that you set your password so you would sign up with your email only it sends the email you get your one time token it redirects to a verify page in your verify page you put in the token the token then redirects to a set password page within then you set the password for your account because that's what i was that's the flow i'm going to be using for the reset password and that's the one i have to use um i may as well use it for signing up because the problem I'm running into is on signups. If it works flawlessly on Gmail and everything, but to, to confirm the email, let's say I'm using Outlook, I get the confirmation email. I've already set my email and password. So now if I go to confirm my email and I'm on Outlook, it'll pre-click the link, which will verify the email in the background, but I didn't click the link yet. So when I click the link to confirm, it will show me an error because the token's invalid because Outlook's already clicked it. 
And then technically it already verified my account because all it needs is a click. And then when I go to sign in, my sign in will work, but that initial error will show up no matter what. So I think that's kind of bad user experience. So the way around that is to set up that set password page, just like the set to forgot my password flow and just sort of make it a lot easier. I don't know how that's going to look development wise, but I think there's a way to do it. So that's what I'm going to be looking into over the weekend and hopefully wrap that up tomorrow, tomorrow, ideally, but if not tomorrow, then over the weekend for sure. So I think this worked out perfectly because this set my, the forgot my password is going to take or taking me a little bit longer than I thought. So perfect workload for the week. I'll probably only have like one day to spare. Um, but like I said, I might try to pull in some some other tasks or create some more tasks to to add in for the downtime. So we'll see. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And maybe next week, there might be a video next week. I don't know. We'll see how everything goes.